Hello, I am Brenda Ringwood, and I am your host for the Becoming the Best You TV talk show. This isn't any ordinary TV talk show. It is a show about becoming the best version of yourself. The change is possible if you really want it. We share stories about ordinary people doing extraordinary things, sharing encouragement, hope, and perseverance of overcoming from people from all walks of life who are doing wonderful things. It is our hope that the things they have struggled to overcome will encourage you to step up and do the things that you want to do in life, to step out and be heard. Don't let your past stop you. Don't let fear and doubt and what others say get in the way of your happiness. Stay tuned as we share amazing stories in hopes that your dreams will unfold. And remember to always put your crown on, wear that crown, because only you rule your kingdom. Hey guys, I got some news to share with you. Some of our B2BY speakers that actually speak from the stage, not just our stage, but other stages, uh, are going to teach a phenomenal class about becoming the best speaker that you can be. So if you want to be a motivational speaker, if you want to be an MC, a corporate speaker, whatever it is that you might want to speak about, if you want to be a better teacher, if you do more presentations for your job and you need to get better at it, this is what you want to do. It's only $4.95. It's virtual. It's about eight weeks. It's interactive. We come out of the gate with you learning how to speak. We teach the business of speaking and you get assignments and we will watch you speak. We will evaluate you and teach you how to do it better. $4.95, man, it's, a, it's really a good price, especially the quality of the speakers that are going to be teaching the class. If you're interested, go on over to btbspeaker.com. Welcome to Becoming the Best You Talk Show. I'm your co-host, Isabel Black, or Izzy, the Intentional Healer. On today's episode, we have part two of our interview with Dr. Ming Wang and our host, the Professor of Change, Brenda Ring Wood. Grab your popcorn, grab your favorite drink. You don't want to miss. We should look for factors within ourselves because we all blame on everybody else on the politicians on the social media we're not going to change the only way to change is human being is find something within ourselves we can change that's true and so i've been thinking why why we're so polarized and i really believe i have found the reason because if you think about what's going on in ukraine people losing the ability to even exist you know, you look at uh, Afghanistan several months ago, the airplane was taking out the couple in uh, Afghanistan. There's someone hanging on the wheel, mm -hmm. fell mid-air to yeah. his death. People, immigrants, refugees, put so much on the line, sometimes their lives on the line, so they can get to the other side. What's on the other side is an opportunity to live in America. They're willing but, to hang on to that airplane yeah. wheel, knowing that they're probably going to die to exactly. take that chance that they might but make it. The problem is that here we live in America. Mm -hmm. We have taken that freedom for granted. Yes, we have. I think because we have forgot our blessing, that being able to live in this country. Yeah, it's not a perfect country. It's got lots of problems. But compared with so much parts of the world, it's mm -hmm. the best country. It's a country that God has given us an opportunity to control our own destiny the democracy, to voice our concern, to express our self voice, and to have opportunity to black and white, Latino, Asian, to work mm -hmm. together. That and placenta did that, not have color that you were putting on exactly, people's eyes. Exactly, exactly. Right. So I think the reason we're so polarized as Americans today is so increasingly fixated on our differences rather than appreciating what we all have in common as fellow Americans is because we have forgot our blessing. And the only way to overcome the polarization is to remind ourselves what people are living through the rest of the world. One time I have a, I give a lecture of student, uh, a commencement speech, one student raised hand and he said, oh, Dr. Wayne was so great. You know, I'm a minority. My parents only make $30,000 a year. We're a family of five. What's so great about this America? It's horrible. <laughs> and I said, okay. He said, you always talk about America so great. What's so great? And I said, $30,000 a year. He said, yes. We're a minority. We're struggling. What's so great about America? I said, $30,000 a year. He said, yes. I said, do you know what $30,000 a year 
household household income place you on the worldwide scale? He said, I don't know. I said, how about top 1%? Mm -hmm. So that's the point. Different viewpoint. Yes. Mm -hmm. that See, and if, you said if, worldwide. Exactly. He's thinking right here. Yeah. So if, if, if I have some vision problem, I will appreciate what I have so much more if I compare my life with the people who are blind, who could not see. You know, our appreciation comes from comparing what we have with, I would say that human uh, happiness does not depend on how much we have. Human happiness does not depend on how much we want. Human happiness depends on the distance between how much we have and how much we want. The smaller the distance, the happier we are. That is so true. I think we as Americans forgot that compared with so much parts of the world, we are so lucky, we're so blessed. If we renew that appreciation, almost like in a husband and wife, if you always fix it on the differences, mm -hmm. you're never gonna have good marriage, you right? Won't. Hey, well, but if the husband and wife turn around and say, oh yes, we have an argument, but honey, what do we have in common? Mm -hmm. It's a mindset, 180 degrees. You can have much better marriage. So it's all in the attitude. Right. If you refuse to see the common ground, you're not going to see. I truly believe COVID has revealed even bigger virus in us, and that's the virus of polarization. Yeah. And the vaccine against the virus of polarization, the vaccine is common ground. You couldn't have said it better with your analogy of all of it. But then you even took things a step further, didn't you? You wrote a book. Yes. I wrote a book, uh, Autobiography mm -hmm. from Darkness to Sight. And, uh, it's been made, turned into a film, mm -hmm. Sight, and the message of Sight is appreciating the freedom in America by being more willing to find the common ground. And we should all find common ground in every relationship that we have. Yes. If you value that person, yes. it, it is worth yes. finding that common ground. Precisely, precisely, Brenda, that the willingness to find the common ground reflect the fundamental appreciation or valuing of that relationship. You know, uh, you know. Sometimes I meet someone who may have different political view and may have, a, you know, certain lifestyle that I may not agree with. But there's always to find the common ground. Uh, for example, one time we got this guy who's in the earring and tongue. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different lifestyle, right? But he still and, has a value. And and I say, well, Johnny, do you like to play ping pong? Well, we say, oh, I love playing ping pong. That's a common ground. Mm -hmm. Common ground give us the starting point to be able to connect build a bridge, and begin to influence that person. Opposite, without common ground seeking, without building relationship and bridging, we have zero chance to influence that person. That's right. You know, uh, with Dr. Rice Books, who uh, wrote a book, God's Not Dead, which you made in the film. Mm -hmm. By the way, in the film, God's Not Dead, the Chinese student, is based on the story is based on my life. Oh, I didn't know yes, that. Yes, God's Not Dead movie. So now you have two movies that That's right, after yeah. <laughs> so Dr. Rice Book and I, um, met almost uh, every Saturday for nearly two years in a row during the pandemic. So nearly 100 Saturdays each time, each Saturday, several hours studying scripture. We study, is it God's calling for us as Christians to lead the way towards common ground seeking? Mm -hmm. And what are God's calling? So we published the um, Common Ground Bible Study, which is four-week mm -hmm. Sunday school study that shows that it is God's calling that for Christians to lead the way towards unification rather than polarization. Right. You know, the Bible said the blessed are the peacemakers. And not only that, what is God's calling? How do we find the common ground? We uh, formulate the common ground seeking steps, S-T-E-P-S. S, see the common ground. You got to be able to see. Just like those magic eyes, mm -hmm. move certain things, oh, that different picture emerging, right? But if you don't believe it's in there, you're not looking for it, you never see it. That's right. So see the common ground, S. As steps T trade places, mm -hmm. I found out that the best a way different to, viewpoint. Yeah, different viewpoint. I found the best way to be um, a good laser eye surgeon is to speak the language of my patients. You know how the doctors are. You walk in, at the doctor walk in, walk out, and medical jargon not connected to the patients. They don't understand. If they don't, the patient don't understand. Then you cannot offer good care. At the end of the day, I realized what's most important in like, taking care of my patients is not what I think, is how my patient feels. So see the common ground, T, trade places, speak, speak the language of the listener. E, empathy, 
you know, when we meet someone different opinions, rather than yelling or shouting, can we apply the SALT principle, S-A-L-T. S, start a conversation. A, ask a question. L, listen. And then and only then, talk, S-A-L-T. And uh, S-T-P-S, P is pay the price. If it's the right thing to do, there's a price to pay. And the final S is putting the action C common ground. Do you know who inspired us to formulate this common ground seeking steps, S-T-E-P-S? It's none other than Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. Christ's life is the best example of this common ground seeking steps. S, he saw the common ground with us as human beings. T, he traded places with us by becoming one of us. E, he demonstrated the empathy towards people in the, even the lowest rung of society. He loved says them in the Bible. All. Yes. And P, he paid the ultimate price by dying for our sin at the cross. And final S, he put in action. He did. So we should realize that Christ has set us an example that to be a Christian is to be a common ground seeker. That couldn't have been better said. It couldn't have been better said. This movie that you've got going on, how did it get off the ground? I know you had... Yeah, it's a very challenging yeah. process. I started from the book mm -hmm. and um, eight years ago. So see, nothing happens overnight. Yeah, nothing happened overnight. <laughs> but you didn't give up. You didn't yeah, quit. Didn't give up. Yeah, it's um, also challenging because it's critical of cultural revolution. Cultural revolution ended 50 years ago. Not, not a single film here in the West has been made openly critical of cultural revolution. Can you imagine, you know, Holocaust happened 75 mm -hmm. years ago. Can you imagine not a single film has been made that criticizes the Holocaust? I mean, tons of films have been made, like Schindler's List, right. et cetera, but that no one dared to be critical of cultural revolution because how powerful, you know, uh, Chinese Communist Party, but also the book is a strong faith journey from atheist to believer from someone who trusts just science to understand life is about science and faith so, so testimony yes testimony so many filmmakers are not willing or don't dare to make it here in the west here in the west their friends are going to get criticized yes or made fun of yes. or their career might tank yes so they're putting what they think their purpose is yes. above the divine. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, it was very challenging to find the message, uh, the, the, the people who would be willing to express this message. So it took me eight years. But we're in the last leg. Uh, Greg Kinnear, one of the Hollywood actors, is the yeah, star in the film. Yes, he is. Yes. And the film will be released in the fall. Mm -hmm. And the message of the film, Sight, is a message of hope a message of perseverance, is a message of humbleness, that realizing that we as human beings, we are ultimately limited. We need to uh, be willing to ask for help from a power beyond ourselves in Christ. is a message about understanding all our past, understanding there's a purpose in our suffering so that we can embrace the present and future and finally, most importantly, is a message of freedom. That is appreciate important. what we have in America. It is important. And you know, when you lose your freedom, that's when you realize what you have. Yes. And then when you get it back, you realize that it is a gift. Yes. So the challenge we face as a nation today, as Americans, is can we appreciate something as precious as freedom without having to lose it. Mm, that's so powerful. You guys out there, do you have freedom? Do you want freedom? It's obtainable. Are you dreaming? You can reach those dreams. This man is proof. He was a prisoner in his own country by no fault of his own, but by the actions of one man, by a dictatorship that was yes. going to control your life. And you saw something better for yourself your parents saw something better for you yes and you you made it happen yes over 20 30 years though yes. it wasn't it wasn't go to school for four years graduate go to med school and then start your practice like most people did you continued that and made it happen 
over and over yeah. again. I'm very grateful to my parents because mm -hmm. during Cultural Revolution, the most critical time as a teenager, they believed in me. Mm -hmm. They must have saw something because we didn't have enough to eat in fifteen dollars a month, and half the time I was hungry. And but somehow they saw something in me. So man, you study hard, study hard. So I think it's a good message. It's a film is that don't be limited by our circumstance today. Be more willing to imagine and believe what we could be tomorrow, you know. And uh, I'm very grateful to my parents. I realized that without them, I would not be able to be here today. So several years ago, as they were getting older in the late seventies, I moved both of them in to live with me for the rest of their lives. Good they took care of me as a teenager yes. in my most difficult times. Oh, that's going to be my next question: yeah, is Where are they now? I, I wanted to take care of them in that sense. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for us to remember where you where we're from. Remember our parents, uh, teachers, people who have helped us, and um, be grateful. That's amazing. That's his advice for you. But before we go, tell them what you feel is the most important way that you can become the best you, the best version of yourself. I think many things. Number one, to always know that what you can change is only yourself. Because lots of time we waste time and blame on others. And uh, when things are not going well, wasting our time to say it's Johnny's fault, it's Nancy's fault. Now, first of all, that behavior, human behavior, blame on blaming on others, uh, there's a root for it. Why we behave that way? That's because blaming on others make ourselves feel better. When we self feel better, we live a little bit longer. You know, depressed people don't live long. But yes. we, need, yeah, we need to recognize this human pitfall. So my first advice is, it's like President Kennedy said, ask not what country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My sort of parallel parity to that says, ask not what other faults are, ask what one you yourself can do better. Good advice. Yeah. And because the natural tendency is to blame on others. That's human nature. So my first advice is to realize our potential is always ask, have I do my, have I done my best in this particular effort? Have I done have I been focused on what other people do and blame on others? Or have I focused on what I can do better? And Focus have I you. maximized my own effort? Realizing that the only person you can change on this planet it's is you. oneself. So that's my first advice. Always ask if we maximize ourselves and always focus on improving oneself. Mm -hmm. Sec uh, because you cannot change the world, the other people anyway. Second is always ask oneself why you're doing something. Because so we are so easy to jump into something, start doing something, start to figure out how to do something, then forget why I'm doing this. Because lots of time when we are unsuccessful in doing something, in the final analysis, it's really because we really don't want to do it ourselves. Very true. Yeah. And we just simply find an excuse. Oh, the time is not right. Oh, because I didn't have <laughs> the money. Oh, because the timing or whatever somebody else didn't come to. Uh, when the, you really analyze it's because I did not want bad enough to do it. So always focus on why you want to do something more important than what you do and how you do it in that sequence. So these are two purposes. One is focus on improving yourself. And second is focus on why you do it. And the lastly, three advices. Last one is despite our human capabilities, despite our technologies, at the end of the day, we have to be humble. We have to be willing to recognize our limitations and realizing that, that there's a power beyond ourselves. If we are more willing to submit ourselves, to be willing to ask for help. Actually, 
at the end we can accomplish more rather than gun holdings to self-important i can do everything mm -hmm. you know you mentioned i, I pray with my patients uh, many many years ago i started doing surgery i wanted to pray with my patient but then other friends say, oh don't do that because your non-christian patient will never come back you know it's a competitive eye surgery business i said oh that's true so i was afraid mm -hmm. you know to pray then i consult my church elders and they say if it's the right thing to do make this a price to pay so i said okay i'm going to go out the limb and god honored gonna, that yeah i'm gonna pray so i pray with my patient but then i was told that i was supposed to be politically correct i need to ask for permission but here's the thing brenda if you're underneath my surgical table underneath my laser and I said, Brenda, is it okay to pray? You may not dare to say no. Exactly. <laughs> so and, and you never know that prayer might change yeah. your life. Yeah. So I did ask for permission, but no patients dare to say no. I did on the surgical knife. But then uh, I'm a researcher, so I wanted to do research. So I collect about hundreds or so non-Christian patients. And I asked each of them day after surgery. I said, um, you know, well, well, are you offended? Because I want to know. Right. And... Uh, this, mo almost all of them interacting with me this way. I said, were you offended? They say, well, Dr. Wang, I did not believe you're Christ. I said, that's why I ask you. Were you offended that I prayed before your surgery yesterday to God just before surgery? And they say, well, you did ask me for permission, but I didn't dare to say no. <laughs> I said, I knew that too. I kind of took advantage of the situation, but I took advantage for God. As I, I said, I feel okay. But I really want to know, so were you offended? So what they told me, really stick in my mind. Um, as I said today, life, what I learned is focus on yourself. And life is about focus on why. And life is about being humble, recognizing we do have limitations, being willing to ask for help. So when I interview these folks, non-Christian patients, when I'm humble and asking them, were you offended? Tell me how you feel. What they told me that stick to my mind to this day. This is what they said. Is that the one? Not only I was not offended, I was actually moved. I said, "How could you move? Be moved away when you don't believe my Christ?" And I was saying, "Faith is beautiful." Yeah. And this is what they said to me. They say, "I was moved because in one of my most important moments of my life, which is my eye surgery, I don't want anything to go wrong. You brought something that is most important to you." That's your Christ, and I appreciate that. That's amazing. So that, that that moment I realized that it's the love for fellow human being that transcends the boundary of faith and religion. It's the love for fellow human being that is our common ground. So seek common ground. Yes. You know, the Bible also tells us without vision, the people will perish. Yes. So that why is important. Yes. It is very important. Yes. Thank you. For doing this thank you for your story thank you for your faith uh, the care that you give your patients I can tell that you really like what you're doing that you're living in your purpose he's encouraging you to live in your purpose find out what that purpose is if you don't know go find somebody and talk through things go find a book look things up on the internet contact this guy <laughs> and if they want to get your book how can they get a hold of this um just type in drmingwan.com and all proceeds donate to the Sai Foundation. And also they can ask for the Common Ground Bible study and all proceeds goes to the Common Ground Foundation. It's wonderful. And uh, how do you support your orphan, your, your uh, orphanage that you Yes, do? we have a foundation there uh, with all the doctors. Uh, we have over hundred doctors. I'm just the leader of the group mm -hmm. and all the surgery are donated to the uh, foundation, uh, you know, to the blind orphan children. So the film site will come out um, later this year. Mm -hmm. And it's the story of faith. It's the story of two of the blind orphan children, mm -hmm. their remarkable journey from darkness to light. That's wonderful. Thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. you, Brenda. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a blessed day.
you know, I'm just hanging out at home working on some edits on some film that we shot. We really have some miraculous stories of some wonderful people who have truly come a long way in life that have overcome challenges, but they stepped out and they did the things that they wanted to do and they grasped the life that they wanted for themselves. And I got to think, well, maybe some of you don't know the reason behind the BTBY movement. What is my story and why this movement is so important to me? Why you are so important to me? Why your life matters to me? And why I wanna see you become the best version of yourself. So I wrote this book and you know, I had a lot of friends tell me I needed to write it and I really didn't want to. But the more I do this, the more I felt that it was needed just for myself even to heal. So if you've got a story out there, you know, sometimes it helps to write it down. And my book is called When the Truth Hunts You Down by Brenda Ringwood. You can get it on Amazon. It's real short. It's just about hundred pages. So go check it out on Amazon. I'd love to hear more from you and what you think about the show and this movement. You can always find me at social media at Brenda Ringwood, Brenda Ringwood at gmail.com or at thingsbybrenda.com. Would love to see you. Hi, my name is Marie Cosgrove and I am a resilience expert. I really believe that unless you have resilience roots, you really can't move forward in life. I was born to a mentally disabled single mom and I am a product of rape. Every doctor said that I should be aborted. My mother was in a coma for months. The doctor said they needed to pull the plug. My grandmother's roots were so strong in her faith that she told everybody to pray all night long, even though the priest was there ready to give the last rites. And my grandmother prayed the very next day, my mother opened her eyes and she had to learn how to walk, talk, and do everything all over again. And despite all of the challenges, those strong roots are the reason why I am here today. And I'm able to deliver a very compelling message to your congregation about resilient roots. Because if it wasn't for my grandmother's faith and her resilient roots and my mother's faith in God, and in Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be standing here with you today. So if you need a message on resilient roots, give me a call, Marie Cosgrove, the resilience expert. Sitting at home working on some more wonderful stories for you to watch. And I got to thinking, I gotta really promote this company called Viseo. I'm getting ready to start on a journey that I want you to follow me with. And I'm going to start taking this little tiny pill called V-Burn. And then in my water and even in my tea, because it tastes really good to add to your tea, I'm going to take this stuff called v -Slim. It's from a company called Viseo, who created liposomal technology. What does that mean? Well, they take these products and they wrap them around a fat bubble so your body absorbs them. You're not pooping out your vitamins. So follow me on this weight loss journey. If you want to know more about these products, go over to thingsbybrand.com, send me a message, and I'll be happy to tell you about it. I'm so excited because Patch Adams is going to be present in West Virginia at a fundraising festival called Mooning with Patch, a moonshine festival in the mountains of West Virginia, Labor Day weekend. Go on over right here, right here to thingsbybrand.com and grab those tickets. Two days, you could just get one day or you can buy a VIP ticket where you get to meet Patch in person, spend some time with him. Oh, this is gonna be wonderful. We have bands of all different kinds of genres headlining to sing for you, to perform for you. So you're going to get concerts, poetry, comedy, all kinds of stuff that's going to be there. Food trucks, vendors, shopping. Oh yeah, you got to come. It's a fundraiser for Patch Adams for his Gesundheit Institute to put windows and sidings on the teaching center that's already constructed. The rest of it will go to help complete the inside of it and then move right on into the hospital. Be a part of his 51-year-old dream. Buy a ticket. Come out and see what Patch wants to share with you. He believes that love and laughter can cure. Go on over right here. Right here.
things by brand.com and get that ticket.